Fly fishing is more of an art form. One of those hobbies that I can't stop thinking about all the time. It just makes me really, really thankful and happy to live in the most beautiful state with the most beautiful fish. There's fish here, we just gotta find the right bead. Just, I felt my line tighten, I knew instantly. Oh. I love to adventure and the filmmaking and the photography allow me to capture those moments and helps for me to share it with other people. My name is Dan Redfield, and these are my photo ventures. This river is unmistakable. It's turquoise blue glacier meltwater and reputation for housing world record sized fish. Running 82 miles westward, the Kenai River dominates a portion of the landscape south of Anchorage. People from all over the world come to Alaska just to fish the Kenai. It's unique bluish green color, not something that you see very often. That alone brings a lot of people to it. It's just a beautiful place in Alaska. The fog as it was following the river actually almost mirroring exactly. I'm not a meteorologist, so I, I couldn't tell you why that happens. You have the warmer water, and then you have the cooler air, and as the water is evaporating, because it's warmer, that colder air above it makes the water condense. That's very common on the Kenai, especially in the mornings. Yeah. Corey and I are both college students. We do a lot of work during the week. We study very hard. We do all of the necessary work to be able to have a day or two to relax. Even when I'm tired or exhausted, which is pretty much all the time, it takes a lot off my mind. It just makes me really, really thankful and happy to live in the most beautiful state with the most beautiful fish. Using silhouette as a technique to frame your subjects is really cool. It adds a little bit of mystery and I'm not allowing you to see the person. You only get to see their shape. So it adds a little bit of mystique and it adds kind of a cool feeling, a little bit of drama into the frame. When that lights the way it is, you gotta take advantage of it. We're here on the Kenai River. Had to go catch some rainbow trout, hopefully, and just have fun with the boys. We mainly fish a different section of the Kenai. The section we floated is drift boat only. It's quiet and peaceful, and it just really shows how beautiful Alaska is. The deep smoke in the air, lick of my lips and shoulders bare. You stole my look and I wasn't right. And now I'm gonna put your lights out tonight So let's take a walk on the wild side If in a hurry, come and take a ride Say your prayers and your goodbyes Let's take a walk on the wild side One of the photography techniques that I wanted to implement on this was mixing long exposure photography with kind of regular photography, taking it at a normal shutter speed and mixing the two together. Capture the action of her flipping her fly, also getting the best of the long exposure technique with the smooth water. And of course you got mountains in the background, beautiful color in the midground. It 
was just kind of hard again because we don't really know that section of the water very well and so it was a little bit discouraging not really knowing what to do where to like cast got it straight out of the air I could tell that they were getting a little bummed. There were looks back and forth between the two and Corey would go down the bank and Tessa would go up the bank and then down and up and left and right and they just were not finding the fish. We were able to notice that there was two sockeyes. They could have been spawning. We decided to throw a bead on. Just, I felt my line tighten. I knew instantly. Once you catch that one fish, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we can do this. I was stoked. I was like, there's fish here. We just got to find the right bead. It kind of like gave us that momentum. Yes. I'm so happy. I felt it just slam it instantly. Dang, with the leaves floating in the water. Money. I was born and raised here in Alaska. I remember catching my first salmon when I was just three, which is kind of weird to think about. You know, you don't really remember a lot of things when you're that young, but I remember watching the salmon jump and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. I didn't really start fly fishing until I was about 15 or 16 and it was Corey and my dad who introduced me to it and there's just no going back. One of those hobbies that I can't, you know, stop thinking about all the time. <laughs> it's just peaceful. It's really peaceful to me. Fly fishing is more of an art form. It's kind of, it's a technique that's really hard to perfect. It's a different feeling than regular fishing, like with a spinning rod. You can tie your own flies and then catch a fish on a fly that you've tied, which is the coolest feeling. You know, lure in a fish on something that you made out of the feather. It's actually two pictures stitched into one. You want to be just barely above the water when you're taking your picture, and then barely below the water. Then you can kind of blend the two together. Corey and I both hooked into and caught a rainbow trout, but I caught the leaf. I'm not sure how the score goes with that. I feel like the leaf is definitely an extra point. But I think because of the perfect symmetry, color, and maturity of the leaf, I think it's got to at least add for two. Which was ahead of Corey at the time, which is pretty common, but... <laughs> Predictions, I don't know. It's, a t it's too tough to call at this point, but Corey's definitely putting lines in the water and uh, I think Tessa's taking a nap, actually. <laughs> you know, at this point, I'm going with Corey, you know. You gotta have the line in the water to catch the fish. The only thing Tessa's catching there are the Z's and I'm catching a tan. I like fly fishing mainly because it gives me a lot of creativity. There is really no greater feeling than catching a fish on a fly you tied or a bead you painted. It, it takes an equal amount of skill, luck, and determination. Skill is very much important. I like to figure out the fish, and if I'm gonna figure them out, I need to have skill. If you put your fly or your bead, you know, in this feeding lane instead of that feeding lane, you might not catch a fish. So it does take some luck. One of the things that separates me from a lot of other people is determination. I will stay out there, fish a 12 hour day on three hours of sleep. The fish are gonna be there no matter what. Your time here is limited on earth, so I'm gonna get out there, I'm gonna fish as much as I can.
It's not luck or skill, it's just dedication. And then it just happens. It really is turning into a fish episode now. That feeling of being able to catch two rainbows, same fly, same hole, that just doesn't feel random. You know, I put my time in, and now I'm catching fish consistently. That's one of the greatest things for me when it comes to fly fishing. You better be watching. You better be watching in the dark. You better be watching. You better be watching on your guard. You better be. You better be. You better be watching. You better be. I don't want to say that I'm king of the foreground, but I mean, certainly I'm foreground royalty. I think it adds so much dimension and it adds a sense of place. And it's one of those things where it can be used or it can be abused. He loves to use the foreground element. And in one particular instance on this trip, he took it a little too far. Hey everybody, Dan Redfield here with another pro photo tip of the day. Now, I love to use foreground elements in my shots, but when we're out here on the water, there's really nothing that you can do to get any dimension in your shots. So sometimes you gotta go gorilla style and just make your own foreground. Oh yeah, oh that's it. Oh yeah, that'll work nicely. After those two fish, I had caught three, so I was up, I was feeling good. He kind of caught up in points. I was like, okay, it's time for me to get back into the game. I missed the hook set because I was eating again. <laughs> One thing that Tessa and I take pretty seriously is taking care of the fish. You want to get it in as quick as possible. The harder that fish has to work, the more lactic acid builds up in its system, which essentially makes the fish stiff and it can't swim. We always use a net. We never take them up on the bank. We take them on the bank, take slime off their body, and then it also brings in the ability that they're gonna hit their head on rocks. We do use a lot of photography, but that's not our number one priority. We don't even look through the eyepiece. We just hold the camera close to the water and we just click as many times as we can. We're just trying to get a quick shot while making sure the fish is gonna stay healthy once we release it. <laughs> I think I've only gone fishing not even a dozen times without him. We fish together pretty much all summer, every day. I just feel like when she's there, we have better days. He's taught me pretty much everything I know about fishing. I don't think I give him enough credit for it. She's able to figure him out just as easy as I am. 
both of us being there. We just catch more fish. He's just my fishing buddy that I like cannot live without. <laughs> If we're gonna keep track of score, four fish for Corey, three for Tessa. I won't make any comments about how I rode the whole time and still outfished her. I caught the leaf. I also hooked into another fish but lost it. I think at this point, everyone wins. I think we got some amazing pictures. We got some fish. Saw a little bit of wildlife out there, mostly an eagle ripping apart an old carcass and fish. I don't think you can really ask for too much more. It was a great day on the water and, and it was just especially nice to be able to be in their element and share a little bit of that experience with them. Uh, what are we about to go do? We're about to go fishing and Okay, let me do that again. <laughs> okay, take two. That was a really <laughs> compelling story though. <laughs> Actually, I'm getting some great shots of the back of your head, Corey. You got a really solid, like, back of the head type thing going on. I don't give that compliment out either. And, um, what else? I always go off on a tangent and then never have a conclusion. Can you do it without the glasses? Or would it be super weird? What do you think? Um, well, I glasses back on, yeah. I don't know. And I just love it when she's there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Did you guys want me to leave? Yeah, you just like do not quit and then it just like ends up happening. Are you talking about how you guys first started dating or him catching fish? He didn't have to try very hard. Oh. <laughs> So at this point, no one's caught anything, and you know what? That's why they call it fishing, not catching. No? Whatever. <laughs> I'm done.